It is extremely important to me that the stories we share are authentic and that we strive to tell both perspectives. I've been a local to this remarkable island three times and a tourist too many times to count. Our home year holiday celebrates Aruba. There's a reason why Arubans are so patriotic and there's a reason why visitors keep coming back. Let's dive into the elements that makes Aruba our home and the perfect holiday. If you were to research the snack croquettes on Google, it will tell you that it is a Dutch snack. But the food has become so popularized on the island that the locals have kind of given it its own twist. Take a look. Chef Jakobs, um, you are making croquettes for us today. Can you tell us some of the ingredients that's in croquettes? Um, yes, we have onions, um, green pepper, and yeah, that's it. That's it? Yeah. Why is that it? Yeah, I don't give away everything, but... Because <laughs> it's a recipe. It's a good yeah, recipe, yeah. so you want to keep something for yourself. Yeah, yeah, of course. I get it. We understand that. All right, let's get to work. In case you aren't familiar with croquettes, this is the snack we are making today. Crispy on the outside with a creamy filling. We won't get into the precise details of Ruben's croquette recipe, but vegetables are a must. Let's start there. When it comes to the peppers, there is something very important to note. Yeah, the green peppers um, taste better for the croquette, so that's why we use always green pepper. Any specific reason? Um, most for the, for the taste. I try um, one time with the other one and it doesn't um, taste that good. Green peppers are a must to make croquettes. A big pot on the stove is needed to cook up the ground beef. A good amount of time mixing and stirring takes place now. Then it's time to hit crush to blend up the veggies that Ruben chopped up earlier. Surprisingly, the croquette recipe calls for quite a bit of vegetables. Once the onions and peppers are all blended and good to go, it gets mixed in with the ground beef on the stovetop. While everything simmers and bubbles in the pot, let's learn about where we are today. The Jakobs family graciously opened up their beautiful home and great size kitchen, might I add, to us today so their son can walk us through how croquettes are made. It was also wonderful to see members of the family coming in and out of the kitchen with warm greetings and offering any kind of help to us. It certainly added to the already homey feel we were getting. The close Aruban family of five are no strangers to croquettes and the popular snack was part of their upbringing. Yes, I was a kid, we used to eat croquettes for, for breakfast or, or at a party. So yeah, it's something we al always said. Once the flour gets added into the ground beef and vegetable mixture, quite a bit of elbow grease is required to thicken the filling. Ruben says at least five to ten minutes of non-stop churning over the stove top is needed. Croquettes are not a Ruben. They are considered a snack that originated from the Netherlands. But due to the island having such a strong Dutch influence, the crispy snack has been basically adopted here as their own. And according to some, there's an Aruban version to the Dutch croquettes. According to Ruben, Aruba has put their own local spin to the croquette. The Dutch version, um, they have croquette and bitter ball. It's uh, yeah, the same, but the, um, the bitter ball is a round one, the croquette is uh, the long one. And it tastes a little bit different, but it's almost the same. Um, the Dutch one in the inside is a little bit liquid, and Aruba is like a little bit harder in the inside. But there's not much um, difference. We've seen Ruben do many things in this kitchen today. He's chopped up the vegetables, so he did all the prep work, and then he put it in a blender, and then everything on the stove. This is, of course, the content of the croquette. The next step is deep frying it, and then tasting. Heat vegetable oil to a very high temperature. Then the ready rolled croquettes with breadcrumbs are dropped in to be deep fried. So I had said the last step in the croquette cooking process was to fry it, but that is actually not the official last step. 
Ruben, please show us yeah, the, the official, mustard. yes, the mustard. Put some mustard and... Perfect, so that is the condiment that pairs with the croquette. So I have a really nice story that you don't know about, Ruben, when it comes to croquettes. Of course, when I was a child, I lived here. Um, after every ballet lesson, uh, my mother would take me to a snack shop in Dakota, and we would get a snack, and they had a bunch of different stuff there. But after every ballet lesson, I looked forward to getting a croquette with my mom. Mm, it's awesome. time to taste. I'm really excited. It looks so good. Mm. The crunchy. Mm, and then the meaty. So good. Thank you. Mm, thank you, too. Mustard is optional. Some prefer it and others don't. But enjoying croquettes with the yellow condiment is the most common way to consume it. Making a sandwich with a croquette is also a typical way to eat it. Croquettes are common here, but not so much in other parts of the world. So let's do a little taste test with some visitors of the island. We are from Quebec City and we've never had a croquette before, so that's like the trial. Let's give let's it a go. It. I'll take this half. Let's go, All smaller right. half. Cheers. One, two, three, cheers. Hey, I'm from the United States, Oregon specifically, um, out on the Oregon coast. So, Tillamook, actually, to be specific. And I'm about to try a croquette. I've never tried this before, so I don't really know what's inside. So it's going to be a surprise. So I'm going to try it now. Uh, we're both from uh, Timmins, Ontario, Canada. Uh, this is our first time trying a croquette, so uh, here we go. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Okay, how do you describe that? It's not spicy. It tastes like gravy. A little bit, yep. Potato-ish, filling. Do you have a sauce with that? That's a great question. It will be good for a dip, I feel. That is a great question. It actually traditionally is eaten with mustard. Mm. Okay. Um, I didn't want it to get messy, but, I <laughs> but that's a great question. You're supposed to eat it with mustard. Okay. Yeah, it would be a good fit with it. I know we were missing something. It's tasty. It's got some different flavors in it. It kind of tastes like a hush puppy. It's good. Wow. Tastes like... Uh, I don't know. Some form of... Like it tastes like a pastry, but then it has kind of a... Um, Not a tofu feeling? No? No? <laughs> it feels like a donut. It tastes like a donut, but that has more of a, like, a dinner taste. Like, not, it's not a dessert. It's more of like a um, appetizer tasting. So the spices are really good. I'm so hungry. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's not bad. I mean, it's to fine. me, it's a little flat. Like, I would need something a little... Well, mustard. Extra to pop it up, but yeah, with the mustard, that would do it. But no, it's right? good. I like it. I wouldn't have. After a few that. drinks, I might have more. <laughs> I feel like it's a mix of um, morning sausage and tofu mixed together with different spices. That's what I feel like it tastes like. Looks like the croquettes pass the taste test. Regardless, though, the North Americans we are speaking with today seem overall content with this little experiment in our home during their holiday, since it exposes them to something small that is part of the Aruban culture. This is my first time in Aruba, our first time in Aruba, and um, we actually chose to come here and stay in, in a condo style place so that we could, you know, look for some of the local restaurants instead of being in an all-inclusive. And so this is, this is perfect. This is exactly the type of thing we want to try and uh, loving the taste. It makes you feel the experience of where you are, right? When you're trying the local food, it's really nice to just kind of have like a taste, a feel, everything that goes with the tournament. So yeah, it's really nice. Pistachis are part of many people's mornings here on the island, but visitors, even repeat visitors, have yet to be exposed to the delicious breakfast. Well, that is about to change. Let's get into the story right now. If you were to type the word pistachi into Google, you'd find that pistachi is a traditional Aruban breakfast. So let's venture to one of the best pistachi stands according to locals. 
This food stand doesn't have a sign displayed anywhere and doesn't seem to have a name. People just know to come here and line up to buy pistachis. Their official name is Moko's Snack Corner. There are dozens of other places just like this one all over the island where you can grab a pistachi. Edwin Figueroa is the owner of the pistachi stand in Moko. The family operated business opened in July 2007. You can find his nephew, Daryl, working the stand along with other immediate and distant family members. Most mornings, Edwin sits with Rita, a relative, while she enjoys her coffee. In between, he hits the kitchen to fry up pistachis. Edwin says they serve a diverse clientele and the pistachis they offer are as local as it gets. Pistachis aren't just another snack, meal, or food item in Aruba. The savory pastry is unique to the island. Arubans are patriotic about it. It is simply part of the island's lifestyle. Ham and cheese, cheese, beef, chop soy, chicken, and tuna are the six standard flavors of pistachi. Rita Tromp, who spends many mornings sitting and watching customers come and go at this pistachi stand, has a good handle on which ones are the most in demand. But for the experienced Aruban pistachi connoisseur, there are four major front runners for Rita. I like the tuna fish. I like the chop soy. I like the ham and cheese tambi. At this place alone, they sell an estimated 300 to 400 pistachis every morning. Now that's a lot of pastries. Their secret, you ask? Well, I tried to find out, but a secret is a secret. They did tell me every ingredient is bought in Aruba and the magic happens in one local lady's home and she supplies to this stand only. Although pistachis are a typical Aruban breakfast, there are many people who haven't tried it before. So, let's see who's hungry. All right, so we're gonna try a pistachi for the first time ever. Who wants to try first? Okay, here you go. <laughs> so we're trying the pistachi. Uh, this is our first time trying it. And uh, let's try it. Try it up. It's actually really good. It's really good. Yeah, it is. Nice. It's nice when you get into it. Very nice. Oh, wow. It's really good. It's like a ham and cheese. It's like croissant. a ham and cheese on a croissant, exactly. <laughs> so good. Mmm. Oh, it's delicious. The bread is really good. That's so good. So, can you taste what's inside? What kind do you have there? I have ham and cheese. It's so delicious. You want more? Yeah. Cheesy. Can't, you can't taste much of the pistachio. No, it's not a pistachio. It's a pastichi. That's what it's oh. called. Oh. Pastichi. <laughs> <laughs> not a pistachio. Sorry. So sorry. Mm. So this is like our first walk to try and find something to eat. So I'm glad that we happened upon this because this is so good. I've never had any Aruban food. It's a little weird seeing a bunch of McDonald's and Wendy's and everything around here, so it's cool trying something local. Yeah, yeah, and different. It's nice, I like it. 
Very nice. Definitely, we we'll get Let's it go. again. <laughs> I would have it again because it's different. And when you go to an island, you're supposed to try their natural food, their, their food, which is very nice. I like it. It tastes like an right. omelet. Tastes like an omelet yeah. so and a chicken pot pie yeah. <laughs> put together. It's like really good time. Yeah.